Let's begin at verse 14. The prophet writes, Justice is turned back. Righteousness stands far off. Truth is fallen in the streets. What an image. Truth has been murdered. Equity cannot enter. Truth fails. He who departs from evil makes himself a prey, a victim. But in all that mess it says, Then the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no man. He wondered that there was no intercessor. Nobody praying. Therefore his own arm brought salvation for him. Hmm. And his own righteousness, it sustained him. For God put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clothed with zeal as a coat. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay fury to his enemies Recompense to his adversaries, the coastlands, he will fully repay. Verse 19. So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. The Redeemer will come to Zion and to those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth nor from the mouth of your descendants nor the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. And may the Lord add his blessing to the reading and the ministry of his word. Amen. The prophet is talking about a really bad time. The world in which he looks ahead and he sees truth has fallen a victim to murder. And you look at it, you wonder, was he looking ahead to our day? Of all the victims of what's happened in our world in the last decade, maybe the obituary of truth that has been written is the saddest. Because many believe you can't even know truth anymore. Everything is so mixed up. But not only was truth fallen a victim, it says that, you know, you you can almost say, well, It's really bad in Washington. It's really messed up in Frankfurt. Man, you turn on the news, you look out there, you see some things that will disturb you. But the prophet didn't just see trouble there. Then he turns his eyes from the trouble of the world. And he looks and to the church 
Maybe the saddest part's what he saw there. The church that is, Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for the nation. That he looked there. I don't know what church was doing. But the Lord noticed, highlighted there that they weren't praying. Hmm. That we got plenty going on, but not praying. That we're busy. Maybe we're talking about praying. Post it on Facebook about praying. Thinking about praying, teaching about praying. But it says that the Lord looked. He saw that the prayer wasn't happening in the church. Oh, I've heard folks talk about that you could... Stroll up and down this holler a generation ago and if you went in the middle of the night you'd hear somebody out in the mountains crying out to God. Praying. I heard Brother Fess's testimony and when he fell under conviction it was because he heard somebody praying for him. That it was the prayers that haunted him. Until he got right with God. And that it was that prayer from his brother that just so disturbed him. And it didn't matter how many beers he threw back. It didn't get rid of that praying from out of his ears. And his mind. God help us. If that the Lord looks and he sees that there was no intercessor. But the prophet didn't stop there. He said, there was trouble in the world. There was a mess in the church. And it said, and when God saw that there was no man, when he wondered why there was nobody praying, with all the mess that's there, that it didn't, Provoke us to pray. After all, he said, it doesn't matter if there's pestilence, if there's, if there's famine, if there's an invasion of an army. It doesn't matter what the trouble is that's in the world. That he said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Oh God, I wonder how many school shootings before we turn ourselves to prayer. How many corrupt politicians before we turn ourselves to prayer. How many this party then that party before we decide you know what the only thing that's going to make a difference is if we turn to God in prayer because he said if my people if there's famine if there's pestilence if there's disease if there's poverty whatever the problem if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and will pray and will seek my face and turn from their wicked ways but with all that trouble, it said that the Lord saw that there was nobody praying. You ever heard if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself? Sometimes you can tell your teenager so many times to take out the trash and it overflows and you just get aggravated enough. I'm just tired of talking about it. 
Mildred, what's your what's your what's your magic calling for? <laughs> Well, the Bible says that when God saw that there was a mess and that even the church wasn't doing anything about it, that the Lord got tired of looking at the trouble That was all around. And nobody going to pray about it. And it says. That God went. And he strapped up his own armor. And he put on his own breastplate. And he put on his own helmet. Of salvation. Because I'm here to tell you. That there's some things. That man can't fix. There's some messes that get so bad. It doesn't matter who you put in office. They can't do nothing about it. You'll put one in and they'll say, I can fix it. And then when they get their hands on it, they scratch their head and don't have nothing, have any idea how to do something with it. There's some diagnosis where the doctor says, there isn't anything that I can do to help you. There's some troubles that get so bad that you know, hey, you can't get your children to go to rehab you can't get them to turn over a new leaf and there's nothing that you can do but I gotta tell you that when there's nothing that man can do about it don't count it out just yet oh don't count the war is over because there is a contender that's about ready to step onto the battlefield and he is not limited and he is not afraid and he doesn't never shy away from a good fight. And the Bible says that God put on His own breastplate of righteousness. That He put on His own helmet of salvation. Oh, I thank God that even when we wasn't praying, God showed up into our life. Jacob had created this mess in his life and laid down his head on a rock in trouble. He wasn't praying. He He wasn't asking God, but God just steps into the scene and shows up. Oh, thank God that He shows up. You didn't pray Him down. You didn't fast Him down. But God Almighty just shows up in your life. You done made a mess. You said, I'm going to turn over a new leaf. But you wasn't able to help yourself. But God steps in. He said, the Lord. Put on his own breastplate of righteousness. He put on his own (coughs) helmet of salvation. But listen to how God fights this mess. We think. It's going to take a whole lot of work, a whole lot of armies, a whole lot of weapons to fix this problem. But listen to what Isaiah said. That when the enemy came in like a flood, when the devil said all that he had with overwhelming force when he sent angry demons when he sent depressed demons when he sent addicted demons when he sent cancer demons when he sent all that he could throw at it he threw it all in he came in like a flood (laughs) this is the devil's Last stand. He's throwing it all. Everything he can. To try to pull him out. A little bit of victory. When the enemy came in. 
like a flood. I don't know if you've ever been in that time where it seemed like there was more coming against you than you had the ability to stand against. When you've said, looked at it and you've thought, if I just had one more bad news, I think I'd lose my mind. If I hear just one more thing, I think I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. If I just hear one more trouble, I think I'm just going to have to give up that I can't take anymore. When the enemy came in like a flood, you get this, everything the devil had he threw at this battle but hear what God does it says when the devil threw all of it like a flood that the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard <clears throat> well, I thought, well, let me look up what that word standard means. That sounds like some big kind of weapon. Is that like a is that like a flaming sword? What kind of weapon is that? That's standard. You know what that was? A flag. Just a flag. That seemed a little strange. That the devil's throwing all he's got. And God just raises up a flag. Well, there, there's this story in the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 17. The children of Israel. It's their first real battle. They've just come out of slavery. But now they have seen God... Fight their first battle for them. Well, they just watch God do it. Pharaoh's army's chasing them. They walk through the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army chases them into the Red Sea. Even though they've seen this miracle. Their minds have to be a little concerned. God opened up the sea. Now He's letting our enemy chase us. But God closes the sea on top of Pharaoh and drowns Pharaoh's army. They don't even have to lift a sword to win that first battle. Amen. Well, then they get out into the wilderness and this enemy attacks them. This group of people called the Amalekites. They tell us that they were really big. They were like LeBron James size big enemies that they were fighting. And in this battle, they're down in the, va in the valley and they're, they're fighting against this, this enemy, this big enemy. And Moses is standing on the mountain and whenever Moses lifts his hands, they're winning. Whenever his hands get tired and they drop down, they start losing. So they figure that out and they get somebody to hold his hands up, prop them up until they win this battle against the Malachi. In that victory, they build an altar because the Lord reveals Himself to them. And the name that God tells them that shows who He is is the Lord, our flag. The Lord, our banner. The flag is the name of the Lord. You see all kinds of war battles where in World War II they go and they take the heel and they plant the American flag. You see in the World Trade Center after the enemies had knocked down our buildings and killed our people, somebody took the flag and planted it. When we went to the moon, I don't know why we needed to put a flag up there, but somebody was planning on it because they had a spare one to put. They put an American flag on the moon. There's something 
about the Lord lifting up a flag in the battle that says, this is my victory. This is my place. This is my family. This is my children. This is, there's something where God just, when the enemy comes in like a flood, all God has to do is just plant the flag and the devil knows he better back off because that belongs to God. And I'm telling you, there's some of you here, you had mothers and grandmothers and grandfathers that have been praying over you, husbands or wives or children that have been praying over you and you may not have realized it because all you've seen is the enemy coming in like a flood and you've seen trouble on every hand and trouble on every side but I'm here to tell you that if you could open up your eyes and see not what the enemy's doing but see what God's doing that God has already planted a flag over your life he's already planted a banner over your life and said your life doesn't belong to you it doesn't belong to the devil God's marked you for his purpose for his calling for his glory and the scripture says that after this happens that from the east to the west they'll fear the name of the Lord from the rising of the sun They'll fear His glory. We get so afraid of what the enemy does when we should really only fear the presence of the Lord. His presence. It's so powerful. So holy. Father, right now, in this place, lift up your flag. The flag of your name, the Lord. Powerful, mighty, holy God. Lift up the flag of your name over every need for healing. Lift up the flag of your name over every need for peace. Lift up the flag of your name over every need for salvation, for deliverance. Let your presence come here in a way like the prophet Isaiah said. That we reverence, that we fear, that we're in awe of the glory in the name of the Lord. I don't know why the Lord does this, but many times He lets the enemy come in like a flood to cause you to realize, cause us to realize that we need Him. That we can't clean it up and fix it on our own. But that we need God to just step in. God to help. Father, I thank you that you let us get to the place where we realize we need you. That we need a Savior, that we need your help. And whatever those needs are right now, God. Don't let us be overwhelmed with the flood of the enemy. But let us see the hope of the name of the Lord. The 
Lord our salvation. This morning if you need healing in your body or you need salvation, you need God to give peace in your heart and your mind. You say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I've been flooded with trouble from the enemy. I want the Lord's help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you lifted your hand and you want prayer I want you to just come and gather around the altar we're going to have a time of prayer and I believe that the Lord is going to do what he promised in his word though the enemies come in like a flood he's going to lift up his flag and drive the enemy out if you need prayer would you come